For 30 years, Raydel has been supporting Aussies by providing health products from naturally derived ingredients to enjoy summer with health confidence. Raydel, the brand of choice by Mitchell Stark and Elisa Healy. Raydel.com.au. This is Sports Day, powered by Red Energy, awarded Canstar's most trusted energy retailer nationally for 2021. That's Red Energy. And for Wilson Homes, enjoy the Tassie summer in your brand new Wilson home. Let's uh, talk some golf now. Mike Clayton joins us, former pro and golf commentator. Mike, thank you very much for your time again. We'll have a chat about Cam Smith in a moment and his big win uh, in Hawaii. But I want to start with Bob Shearer and the sad passing of uh, an Aussie golfing legend. Uh, you would have known Bob quite well. Um, just your reaction, Mike, if, if we can start there. Well, I knew Bob really well. I mean, when I was a kid just starting out in the early 70s, he, he was the god of Melbourne golf. Peter Thompson, was, he seemed so old to us, but of course he wasn't. He was only in his mid-40s. But um, Bob was just a big star. He was the biggest star of the local stars. He wore the best pants. He had the best clubs and he hit the best shots. And he, he really he played... He played the sandbelt especially well. He won so many tournaments on the sandbelt. He was our hero, really. So it was hard to believe. I mean, Kathy, Bob's wife, rang my wife on Sunday morning. It was like, what? I mean, it can't be true. And, you know, I mean, he was always, you know, just he loved playing golf. He was pretty healthy. He was, you know, just seemingly, you know, it was something you just couldn't imagine happening. But, you know, it was, it was a horrendous piece of news, really. But, he, he was such a lovely man. He, I mean, you know, Bob's image was cultivated in Europe with Jack Newton and Stuart Kennedy and Stanley. Of, you know, they, you know, they drank the clubhouses dry every night over there. But mm. he was a he was a quiet man and gentle, and he, he wasn't. You know, he was a he was a much different person from the public image of the early Bob Shearer, which kind of got lumped in with Jack and Stan. And you know, I mean, they certainly set up the European tour in the early 1970s. And in many ways, uh, Bob and Kath uh, collectively were uh, a big feature of the Pro Am Tour. Um, they were always uh, Bob was always a player, and Kath was uh, often, at least the ones I went to, she was always uh, it seems part and parcel of the organisation of those events. Uh, they were almost royalty in the Victorian golf scene. Well, Kathy became uh, well. I mean, Bob became Kathy Shearer's husband in the end. But um, because she ran the press tents at, yeah. at, at the Australian Open and the Australian tournaments for, I mean, she's been doing it for 30 years. Yeah. So, I mean, everyone, I mean, she's a legend in her own kind of time as well because yeah. she's just such a feature of Australian golf. And, you know, together they were incredible. But, I mean, he was obviously a great player and she was a, I mean, Cathy's been a legend for, forever. I mean, yeah. everyone loves Cathy. Wow. So 27 yeah. tournaments worldwide, um Famously hoisting the Australia's uh, Australian Open Stonehaven Cup uh, in 1982, where where will Mike sit uh, when the list of when Mike Sheehan does his best uh, top 50 golfers uh, in Australia? Where does Bob Shearer fit? Well, he's you know, that's an interesting question. He's you know clearly inside the top 20, and our top 10 players of you know, we've probably had 10 players of one major, so yeah. you know you, you fall slightly outside that and. Devlin and Crampton won more times in America and you know so he's somewhere you know, 10 to 20 probably but you know he won the Open there were Australian Opens and Australian Opens yeah. and not many people got to beat Jack Nicklaus head to head around the Australian when that course was really difficult Yeah. when the crowds were huge you know, it was massive TV playing Nicklaus not quite at his peak but Jack won the Masters four years after Bob beat him in the Australian Open, so yeah. he was still yeah. a great player. So, as I said, there are Australian Opens and Australian Opens, and Bob won one of the great ones. I mean, as I said, to beat Jack down the stretch, playing with him on the back nine was a phenomenal performance, and that was certainly his best day. I mean, you know, he won the US Tour, he, on the US Tour, he won a bunch of times in Australia and New Zealand and, and Europe, but to beat Nicholas down the stretch at the Australian was a monumental effort, really. Do you see those as the golden eras of uh, golden years of golf in in Australia, or is it more when Norman came and uh, and Tiger Woods was playing here? No, well, it's a good question. I think that Nicholas and Palmer and Player, the big three of professional golf in the sixties and seventies, were managed by Mark McCormick, IMG. Yeah. We did a deal with Stadinger, Dunlop Stadinger, that they would come out here, play with Dunlop Stadinger clubs, and they would play in Australia every year yeah. and 
they obviously didn't come, all, not all, all three of them didn't come out every year, but they played an awful lot of golf here. And, you know, they dominated the Australian Open and the local tournaments with Peter Thompson and Cal Nagel. So that was a phenomenal, I mean, it was just at the start of when I was playing golf. And, I mean, they, they were proper gods of golf. I mean, yeah. Nicholas was a and Palmer. So, and, and then, you know, that sort of morphed into David Graham and Greg Norman and, and Shearer. And, you know, they were uh, great years. For, I mean, Greg, in, in his own way, carried the tour for 15 years, really. Yeah. 20 probably, but but with Graham Marsh and uh, Billy Dunk and, and Baker Finchlater and Wayne Grady and you know it was, it was certainly an amazing era of golf. And then you know the the US Tour has gone with the wraparound season, so even our best players feel like they've got to stay and play in America in November and December, when they would automatically come back home in yeah once the tour was you know, largely finished by early October, they would come back here and play. So so it's changed a lot, and the tour has got to reinvent itself now. I mean, how the administration runs the tour from here into the future is going to be the, you know, it's a pressing question. We need to get away from, well, whilst, I mean, ProGolf here is sponsored by governments, essentially, state governments. Yeah. And whilst that's welcome and very good, we need to get back to an era when corporate golf liked and supported Australian golf, and that's... Don't be dependent on our best players coming back to play here a little bit. I mean, you, you can't expect Cameron Smith to pass up a million dollar first prize last week to come and play for a million dollars this week at Royal Queensland. Total prize. Yeah. Mm. You now it's just not. But the local players have got to feel as Thompson and Norman and Shearer and David Graham and Jack Newton and Ian Baker Finch, all those guys did for so many years, feel an obligation. To support the local tournaments, and because if they don't, they'll just go away and die, and and that's largely where where we're at now. Yeah, yeah, Mon- money talks. Uh-huh. Yeah, it does. Yeah, Mike, just on Cam Smith, you, you talked about him winning the uh, the event in Hawaii, the the Champions uh, event in Hawaii, fin- a staggering uh, winning score of um, minus thirty four. Um, what made that win so good? What did you like most about his game? Well, the thing I like most about his game is that. I first saw him play one the Australian amateur at Commonwealth, and he didn't look very good. Like, he looked good, but he did, it wasn't Adam Scott or Mimu Lee or Greg Norman, who, who I also play as, you know, kids, as teenagers, really. He did, you know, he just looked like a nice player who played well, and, you know, if someone had said that kid's going to be in the top 10 in the world in 10 years ago, really? How? But the guy up here at Royal Queensland, Tony Meyer, who runs the Queensland kind of Institute of Sport here, golf section and he said every time I see Cam play he's just, he's just better than the last time I saw him play and you know he doesn't do anything obviously well except he pitches the ball really well and he plays really well and drives it really straight but he just plays the game beautifully and he's clever and he's a smart player who just keeps getting better and in a time when we see a lot of young players getting worse for whatever reason you know, I mean, Ryan Ruffles is a great example. I thought Ryan was a, you know, at 15 years old, he was one of the best kids I'd ever seen play golf. And he's not even on the US Tour, which is, you know, if someone had said by 2022, will, will Ryan Ruffles be on the US Tour? I'd put my house on it. Mm. You know, so, so, so what's happened there, Camden, you think, Mike? I don't know. It's hard to tell without, I have seen him play for so long, he lives in America, so it's hard to know. I don't know. You know, you can, you can get caught up in, I don't know, you know, different theories about changing teachers and just losing confidence. And I don't know, it's a, it's a mystery. I mean, it's a hard game. It's a hard game. It is indeed. But you're saying, well, you're implying that he changed coaches. So are we we're we going down the, well, the technical issue? Well, he changed coaches because Dennis McDade, who teaches him, is based in Melbourne. And with the pandemic, he couldn't get over there. Oh, okay. So, you know, I mean, Dennis said to him, look, you have to find someone over there because you can't come back here and I can't get over there and you can't go two years without a coach. Mm. So, you know, it, it's really hard to know without yeah. seeing him play and talk to him and to, you know, to really know what's going on. But, you know, there was a kid who was an amazing player and and, 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 and who may still well be. Yeah. Mm. He, what is he, 23 or 4? He's, he's still young. and you know, uh, But, you know, part of the problem, I think, is that they go to America and play that Corn Ferry Tour instead of going to Europe. And the wisdom of going to Europe was borne out by Lucas Herbert and Mimu Lee, both of who went there, played there, 
and got into the top 50 in the world by playing great golf in Europe. Right. And once you made the top 50 in the world in Europe, or, or through playing the European Tour, you can walk onto the US Tour. Mm. And that just seems to me a much smarter path than being stuck on this I have to go to America route, which is just, it made no sense. It never made any sense to me. It wasn't what Greg Norman did or Bob Shearer or Nick Price or, I mean, obviously, Bella Sturles and Fado and Langer and Lauren and Wisdom all grew up playing in Europe. You know, yeah. It wasn't what they did. You know, and, and Ryan, I think, is a classic example of someone who's gone to America and got lost on that corn ferry tour, which is just no place to get lost on. Mike, thanks for having a chat to us again. Thanks uh, for your great memories of Bob Shearer as well. Thanks, guys. I enjoyed it. Good on you, Mike Clayton, joining us there, former pro and uh, golf commentator. Well, Brad... Great historian too. He, he, he's, a, he's a great man to talk to about, you know, 50 years of golf. Because he's been around now. He wouldn't be 70, but he'd be, might he be just a bit older than me. I reckon he'd be 62 or 3 or something along those lines. And have fantastic uh, recollections of Bob Shearer yeah. as well. What a big loss that has been. We'll have a chat to uh, Phil Lutton from the Sydney Morning Herald next on Sports Day. For 30 years, Raydell has been supporting Aussies by providing health products from naturally derived ingredients to enjoy summer with health confidence. Raydell, the brand of choice by Mitchell Stark and Elisa Healy. Raydell.com.au